explains the parallel of how a father treats his son. He says, treat your nafs like you treat your son. How much do we care about our children's upbringing? How much are we concerned with what they do, what they see, what they eat, what they drink? All the time we're preoccupied with what our children do. The Imam, whom we claim to love, has taught us how to treat this love. And he said, treat it like a, like a, like a caring father treats his son. And if we treat it with snuff of ours like that, we will understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us through the training of our children how to treat our nafs as well. It is the same way that sometimes we take it the other way around and we pay more attention to treating and taking care of our kids rather than taking care of our own kids. And this is the same of the Imam. And inshallah, Allah give us all the tawfiq that we should keep up these remembrance of the Imams alive. But we should also remember that this remembrance is kept alive only when we keep alive the practices of the Imams and their advices. Imagine a son, imagine a father having two kids. One of his sons loves to praise his father. And he knows that the praise of his father will get some attention in the community. And people will say, yeah, the, the son, he really respects his dad. No, I respect him because, of, because he's only talking good about him. The other son is rather quiet. Doesn't speak so much. But there's a difference between him and the other one. His other quiet son is totally obedient. Inside the house, out of the former son, knows more how to break his house. But in the house, he doesn't find it too, too suitable for himself. You are lazy, dummy, goofy. Which of the two sons does the father appreciate more? Second one. Which of the two sons does the father appreciate more? Second one. It's only common sense. Look at ourselves. How much do we mention the Imam's name and how much do we act by what he says? Who are the lovers who love us of the Imam? One, two, spend most of their time raising Ahl Bayt without action or the ones who act more than they speak. Is it not the Imam saying that says, Kunu du'atan lana bi ghayri al-sinatikum. Be preachers of our religion without your tongues. This is what we have to learn. What gratifies the love of Ahlul Bayt? It's true, the love of Imam Ali alayhi salam keeps one away from sin, but how? Not to pretend love. If I today pretend love of the Imam, it doesn't keep me away from sin. If I today pretend to cry for Imam Ali it doesn't keep me away from sin. There needs to be a process. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places the aql for us in order that we may understand these concepts very well in order that tomorrow if somebody stands up and says your religion is like this or like this we can say no because I have understood it not because my father or my mother taught it to me I repeat not because my father and my mother taught it to me our parents are here to give us the basics the religion is for you, for you, and for me. Each of us have our religion to ourselves. 
There's no such thing as our father's religion. Our father's religion and our grandfather's religion is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about the qualities of the mushrikeen. And those mushrikeen say, no, it's not possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have misguided us. Because our fathers and our their fathers were practicing the same things and if Allah wanted, He would have guided us aright. We need to be able to understand what our parents are giving us and then think about it. Let it grow. Start afresh. This is Muharram. If we really care for the Imam. Otherwise it still stands that the Imam is standing on Karbala alone. Who's he asking for help? Who's he asking for help? Did he want any help? Did he want anybody to come and help him there and then when the angels came down? When the angels were prepared to come down? Did he want their help? Did he even want the help of his companions? He preferred to stay alone. He didn't, he didn't need mine and your physical help, brother and sister. Neither did he need the beating of our chest without the understanding about how this affects our souls. The beating of our chest is supposed to affect our souls. We are supposed to know how that beating affects our souls. How does it bring a change? Don't say it's magic, it happens. No, it doesn't. This is the most pristine religion. Understand these things. If we don't understand, we need to ask. Otherwise, tomorrow, culture will fade away. You will no longer see your religion. Because the youth will ask these questions all the time. And we will have no answers. Muharram is for this. It's a sacred month. Even the Arabs of Jahiriya used to hold this month sacred. And it should become more sacred for us when we know that it's sacred because now the new fruit is growing. And I can see that fruit growing within me. And myself has grown. I need to see the change. The Imam needs to see the change. He needs to see our help like this. If we really wish to be there, if we really wish to be in the place of those companions and family of his who gave away everything, then this is what he needs to see. And I don't have too much time. But I just like to summarize